but I absolutely hated mathematics. I uh -huh. mean, I, you know, some bits you don't follow, but you learn to be comfortable with that and to keep going. Um, okay, if you, if, you, if you held a gun to my head and said, could you reproduce the details of the proof? Well, that would be really too bad for me. I think that a lot has been said and written about it that in, in, in many ways is a, is, a, is, a, is a giant red herring um, in order to avoid confronting much harder problems. So welcome to Math Life Balance. Today, our guest is Adibisi Agbula, a professor in the University of California, Santa Barbara, working in number theory and arithmetic geometry, and also a family friend. Welcome, Bisi, and thank you for agreeing to do an interview. Uh, thank you very much for um, agreeing to interview me. Is it okay to call you Bisi? Yes, that's perfectly okay. Great. So let's start. And my first question is, uh, what brought you into mathematics? Well, that's a rather um, that's a rather curious thing. I mean, with a lot of the people I know, at any rate, you know, you ask them, you ask them how they got interested in mathematics, and you always find that, oh well, you know, they were always interested in this, you know, from a very young age, and they always knew that exactly that this was what they wanted to do, and um, and it was all. Um, it was all very clear to them. In my case, that was not the that was not the case at all. Um, in fact, it was it was quite the opposite. I I um I was very interested in 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 everything else, and I was sort of reasonably good at everything else, and you know, sort of school and that sort of thing. But I absolutely hated mathematics. I uh -huh. mean, I I I hated it with a passion. I. I failed every mathematics exam I ever took. I mean, and when I say fail, I mean, you know, 18% sort of fail. I mean, it was, it was, it was, um, you know, it was really, it was really pretty bad. And it, it got to a point, um, it, it was, it was, it was a rather curious thing because I was, I was interested in science. And I remember being very, I was very interested in chemistry and I spent, I spent ages doing, um, you know, all sorts of weird chemistry experiments at home. And those were in the days when, you know, they didn't have all these, you know, sort of um, ridiculous liability laws and chemistry sets were, you know, sort of really properly interesting things where you could, um, you could, you could buy proper chemicals and, and do, do, um, do, 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 do really interesting experiments. And I remember I'd, I'd do these experiments and then I'd go to school and then you know, tell my teachers what I had done, and they would be horrified and would telephone my parents. Um, I, you know, I just kept failing all my failing all my mathematics exams. But then, at some point in the school library, in my school library, I came across a book, and it was it was called the Time Life Book of Mathematics. And um, there, were, I don't know if you, I don't know if you ever saw any of these Time Life books. I mean, I don't know if they exist anymore. I, I suspect they don't. Um, but they had them on all sorts of different subjects, you know, from pretty much anything you could, you could, you, you could imagine, you know, the time life book of engineering, the time life book of chasing butterflies. Okay. I, I made that up, but okay. Um, they, they did have a, a time life book of, of mathematics and this was essentially, um, it was essentially a history of mathematics. I did meet one other person later on, um, you know, who's still a good friend. I mean, who is also a professional mathematician who read that book. I don't think it didn't have the same impact on him, but we, you know, we both read the book and remembered, we, re we both remembered at, during our conversation, the exact same photograph from that book. There's a picture of Sammy Eilenberg lying on his back on a mattress in, in an apartment in New York City. Um, <laughs> a young Sammy Eilenberg, but, but yeah. Um, and in fact, I, I, we had this conversation at Columbia. So, so yeah. Wow. Uh, you know, there's this trite saying where you, you know, people say their 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 lives are substantially altered by a book, and I suppose in many cases it's the Bible or something. But in my case, it was this um, it was this time life book of it was this time life book of mathematics, which when I look at it now, I find it's um, incredible to me that uh, that this would. That this could have done that it it doesn't seem it doesn't seem terribly exciting to me now but it did it did the trick then i see so uh from what i gather 
your daughter then may still become a mathematician because I remember Amaya saying when she was in second grade that mathematics is boring, but uh, she may still change her mind. <laughs> I, guess. I think there's, I, I suspect there is um, little chance of that. Um, I think, I think, um, I, I don't think, um, I, I'm not sure that mathematics has become any more exciting in that respect, but who, but who knows? It's very hard to, in, in many cases to predict, I think what people will be, what people will be good at or what, you know, what decisions they'll take. I mean, there are just so many, there are just so many different factors that go into this, that it's, it's very hard, at least for me at any rate, to make, to make any predictions. But I have a question about it. So uh, speaking of uh, Amaya, as far as I remember, at least at some point, uh, you were teaching some mathematics uh, to her and her group in preschool or some early age on. Uh, do I remember correctly? And yeah, Sort of, go on. <laughs> and if yes, uh, so I wonder, how do you manage to get down to earth from abstract mathematics and explain mathematics to someone who has uh, no um, experience with mathematics yet? Oh, that's not so, uh, that's not so hard, I don't think. It, I mean, in that particular case, what I did was I went into, to say that I was teaching these children, um, to say that I was teaching these children mathematics was, um, you know, I mean, maybe that's overstating things, a, a, you know, a bit. I would go into the classroom every week for an hour, and I did this, I did this for several years, I did this for about six years, and that was, a, that was an interesting experience. I'd go into the classroom every, for an hour, for an hour or so every, every week, and I'd do whatever the teachers wanted me to do. Um, you know, they had, they had various ideas, and, um, you know, I, you know, sort of followed, followed their, um, I more or less follow their follow their lead. I, I think it's very important in a situation like that that um, you can't just come in and tell the teachers, you know, well, this is what I think you should do. In terms of explaining explaining mathematics to um, to small to, to small children or to or indeed to anybody. I mean, no one's ever really asked me this before, but I think it it it, it really comes down to understanding, right? Um, you have to, you, what you're trying to do is to understand something. And so what I, so when you're trying to explain something to somebody, I mean, so what do you do? Well, you, you focus on what they might find difficult or what you found hard at that point. And then you, 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 you explain that. I mean, quite often, you know, and this applies to everybody, not just small children. I mean, you know, you, you, you know, they're, they're just these you know, they're, they're just these sort of little idiot blocks, as it were. And then, you know, once you get past those, you're, you're fine. And, um, and it's, it's, usually, it's usually just a question of, um, of, uh, of, of getting past those. And I will say that, I mean, at least in, in terms of small children of, of a certain age, I mean, they're very curious, you know, they're like little, they're like little, little sponges in a way. You can tell them, you can teach them almost anything. You know, if you can, if you can, if you can, if you can grab their attention, you know, they're, uh, they're they're a lot more curious than many college students, for example. You know, by the time they get to by the time they get by the time they get to college, their their their, their curiosity has been corrupted, and um, and the whole exercise becomes something altogether different. But um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's really just a question of um, uh, just seeing what they need in order to in order to under, in order to understand something i have i have a feeling i haven't really properly answered your question but that's 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 essentially you know that's essentially that's essentially it i mean it's certainly what i do for myself for example if i don't you know if you don't if you don't see something if you don't understand something there's usually you know there's usually a reason and if you can isolate that at least at least that's something i mean you can and then you can you can go on from there but if you if you if you can't do that then you're really you're really lost um, and you have to become you know the task is to become unlost as it were uh, yes i understand when you explain about doing it yourself but i have no idea how to do it for other people so uh, a little different question is if you try to explain for example what you are doing your research to someone who is outside your area like how to 
this level of abstraction uh, is what I'm curious about how to try to bring down to earth if you ever have to do that. <laughs> well, fortunately, I rarely do um, because um, it depends on what you mean. So you seem to be asking for general rules and I'm not sure, I'm not sure there's a general rule here. It really depends upon whom you are speaking to and what impression you wish to convey. Of course, I mean, if I were to take a, you know, just a random person on the street and then, you know, try to explain to them exactly what I'm doing, I mean, that's that's just not going to work. I mean, it's it, that's that's simply that's simply not going to that's simply not going to happen. But what you can do is you know, sometimes people want, sometimes people say they want something explained when in fact what they really want is something else explained. I mean, they don't, they, they, they really want something else, but they don't realize it. Okay. And so what you have to do is give them something else. And so, I mean, if you were to, if you were to, you know, if someone were to say to me, well, okay, you know, tell me and tell me and, you know, three minutes or five minutes, you know, sort of what you do. I could give them a very vague, I could give them a very vague idea that really would say nothing. I could give them a vague answer that would, that would really, that would really say nothing. On the other hand, um, if you sat someone down for 20 minutes, then you, you might not be able to, um, you know, explain exactly what you're doing. But I think in 20 minutes, if you sort of sat down, you could explain you could explain certain things that would give them um, a much clearer idea of the flavor of what you're doing and the um, and, and 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 some of the thought processes in, involved. I mean, what you can do is give people an idea of what the thought processes involved are. I mean, if I were to, you know, you're not going to be able to tell them, um, you know, about the latest sort of technical developments, but you can give them some idea of. Um, how one goes about thinking about things, or at least a taste of this. But I don't think I could do it in less than 20 minutes. Let's put it that way. And most people do not have 20 minutes. I guess most people do not have concentration for 20 minutes. Um, no, I wouldn't go that far because most people can concentrate on things in which they're interested for oh, yeah. 20 minutes, although, although maybe, now, maybe, maybe nowadays in the internet era, that is something that is disappearing um, as, we, as we speak. I, I was going to say if you're in a bar, well, in a bar you could do it, but if you're in a cocktail party, for example, you're not going to be able to sit someone down in general for 20 minutes and you know, explain to them whatever. Um, you couldn't, you could in a bar, but that presents other challenges. <laughs> um, so speaking of interest and concentration, uh, I remember giving a talk in your seminar and I was impressed how you kept asking questions on and on, although my subject is not in your research area. Uh, and I had the impression that you asked like everything so that you really understand what's going on during the whole talk, which, um, was very pleasant for me. So, uh, how well, do you thank you. <laughs> <laughs> how do you manage to follow math talks, especially long ones like one hour and one and a half hours? How do you? Well, that's um, um, that's tricky because again, that varies with you know that varies with time. Because my answer now would be quite different from you know the answer I would have given you say. Um, <clears throat> You know, thirty years ago, when I had much less experience, and uh, both, I beg your pardon. Give me both answers, please. Well, uh, could I could I put myself back in, you know, put myself in the shoes of my 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 thirty years younger self? I'm not I'm not I'm not sure. But let so let let's talk about now. Um, so I you know so so I guess by now, um, well okay you know. Well, there are things I'm interested in. Um, I guess I'm interested in a lot of different things. So I've read a lot of different things. I've talked to a lot of people. I have a lot of, um, you know, I've, I've just built up a lot of experience over the years. And I, there are things I want to understand. So for me, um, I'm, I, what I'm interested in is in understanding something. You know, it's, um, 
that's 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 what's um you know that's what's most important to me and so if you if you start talking to me about something you know sometimes i can relate it to something um sometimes sometimes i can relate it to something that uh, i've seen before and take things from there you know sometimes it reminds me of something else it's a bit tricky it, it depends upon the piece of mathematics but if i find it interesting if then you just sort of keep going now you ask how do you follow how do you completely follow um a talk for an hour and a half the, the the answer is you don't necessarily do that you know some bits you don't follow but you learn to be comfortable with that and to keep going and so um no it 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 really is you know it really is it really is true i mean when you're starting out and I, I think this is this is something that this is something that i think many people don't understand i mean when you're starting out okay you go to talks and you go to talks and you don't you don't understand often you don't understand anything at least when you're a student when you when you know you're a beginning postdoc and that sort of thing you don't you don't you don't you don't follow very much and many people i think conclude that okay well this is too depressing i i can't take this i'm just not going to any talks anymore but what they fail to what they fail to grasp is that it is possible to derive benefit from an experience even if you don't understand it even if you don't completely understand it right i mean because you see what you see you know you see what is happening you focus you 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 see what's important you can figure out what's important and then you can talk to people and then you can read things and then you you know you keep on going and maybe months or years later what you saw back then begins to make sense to you and begins to pay off it all builds up but but it's important to it, nothing's going to build up if you don't actually actually do this I mean somehow you have to be you have to <clears throat> I, I mean I, I'm thinking this through as I talk to you I mean you're asking I, I think what you have to do is you have to become comfortable with a level of not understanding so you have to realize that okay well I, 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 because you're not going to most things you don't understand I mean I, you know I mean that's just true that's just true of anybody but somehow you realize that oh, okay I don't understand this now but that's okay I mean I'll go away and I'll think about it and then then I'll under you know then I'll then I'll understand it um and I can if I want to pursue this in greater in greater depth I can and I can under I'll, I'll be able to understand things I can understand things um <clears throat> I can understand a piece of mathematics um in as much detail as I wish um if I just think about it but somehow you have to you have to develop the um you have to develop the consequent the, the 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 confidence that this will happen and the only way the only way this happens is to actually do it you can't approach things by saying oh god this is hopeless i just i don't understand anything this will never work i'll never get anywhere because of course of course you start out by understanding nothing i mean that's that's how it works but step by step you you keep on going now in 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 your particular case um Oh, okay, you know, you gave a talk. No, I'm not an expert on this, but I've read some things. I know something about it. Um, you explain things well. You were willing to answer questions, and so um, you explained, you know, sort of what you had done. And I could, I could see what you had done, and I could get some idea of, you know, how you proved it. Um, okay, if you, if you, if you held a gun to my head and said, "Could you reproduce the details of the proof?" Well, that would be really too bad for me. But um, Uh, fortunately one one is one is one isn't often placed in that position it's a bit i i it's a bit like um it's a bit like trying to learn a foreign language in a way i mean because i found this about I, i found this about i found this about 10 years ago you know when i when i when i had to do this um you start out by not you start out by not understanding and so you go to lots of talks and you watch programs and you listen to things and you know i mean you know that um okay at the beginning you don't understand and you know you're not going to understand but you have to make the effort and that's okay and if you just keep going um something will happen and of course indeed it indeed it indeed it does i mean that's that's that that's um and i think i i think most mathematicians who um most mathematicians who at least uh decide to pursue research i suppose um develop a, a high level of comfort with not understanding 
And this is a much higher level of comfort, I think, than exists within the general population. I mean, with most people, you talk to them, they don't understand something. You know, you present them with something and they've not seen it before. They don't understand it and they panic. You know, whereas what you have to do is just sit down and, um, and, and, and think about it and maybe you'll get somewhere. And maybe you won't get somewhere, but I guarantee you that if you don't do this, you will definitely not get somewhere. <laughs> that's for sure. I mean, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that's, you know, so, so, there, so there, really is, um, there really is an alternative, I think. And um, I think, and I think it's also related to the following thing. Um, and I've, I've, always, I've, always, I've always believed this, and somehow you have to you have to inculcate this in small children as well. I think you know you have to you have to think for yourself. So I think I, so. I claim that once you've had the following experience, once or twice, you'll be okay. Pretty much, no matter what happens to you. And the experience is this: I think that what has to happen to you is you you have to be confronted. You have to be confronted with a problem that at first sight you have no idea of what to do you have no clue and then you sit down and you think about it you know possibly for a long time and then eventually you figure out what to do and you solve it i think once that's happened to you i think once that's happened to you a, a, a couple of times you're okay you'll you'll be fine and until it does well, okay, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I guess there are, I mean, you know, there are very, very, very bright people in this world and maybe, you know, maybe, um, maybe this never happens to them, but I, I doubt it, but, um, but, but maybe, maybe it doesn't, but in that case, in that case, you know, I, a lot of this is just superfluous anyway. So um, when we just met, uh, I think I was in 10th grade of high school, which means 15 years old. And I think uh, that's right. Yeah, and I was extremely excited because you were one of the very first real mathematicians that I've met, maybe the second in my life. And uh, what was even more incredible for me is that you took seriously my dream to mathematics, uh, of mathematics. And you, you taught, like started explaining me some math and then later on you were so kind to encourage me about my dream and to send me a, pre a present from Princeton, the mathematical encyclopedia and the book about um, researchers at IS and their experience with their photos, um, which was absolutely astonishing and inspiring for me. And I cannot thank you enough for that. Um, oh, that's quite all right, honestly. <laughs> well, you know, it was the first encouragement about math research that I got, so very memorable for me. And uh, so I was excited and um, I wanted to brag to my peers about, you know, meeting a real mathematicians, which was, you know, so exotic for me. And I Googled, um, I mean, I didn't have a computer yet. So like in the, our informatics class, I, I put your name in the Google search uh, to check that, you know, who are you and what, what you do, which kind of math. And the first link was your mm, webpage of the university, but then there were many more links and, uh, they were all um, titled like lists of black mathematicians. And I just sat there and I was completely shocked. I could not understand what is that supposed to mean. Um, I had no idea back then about anything like, you know, the words like diversity or racial discrimination, none of that has been around uh, in the modern context of that time. And so I, I could not, I mean, what I gathered from that information and complete confusion was that there exists this some other universe where for some reason they, they have so many mathematicians that they have to distinguish them by skin color, which was very confusing for me. And, and what I did gather is that I have no idea how, how it is to be you and how you feel about it. And I gather that I can never ask you because this is clearly too embarrassing to ask about. But now 12 years passed and um, I, I learned by now that perhaps it's better to ask if you don't understand something. So 
if you don't mind, let me ask you, how did you feel about being in those lists, which, you know, are in Google, if you Google your name? And what is, in general, your experience with race and academia? Well, I mean, those are really at least two separate questions. Um, so it, it's sort of, it, it, it's funny. Um, so let's start with the, you know, let's start with these lists. So I know these web pages that you um, that you're talking about. Um, to be honest, I I have um, um, I remember when I first uh, sort of came across them and I found myself on these web pages. I thought, well, hmm, this is a uh, this is a uh, you know this is curious. Um, but the people who created those web pages, I mean, just to be certainly um, never contacted me or anything like that. I mean, I have I have I have. Um, I have absolutely um, no idea, sort of how they got their their information or how those or how those or how those web pages uh, how those web pages uh, came to be. And it's fact, it's funny because years ago, many many years ago, I think somebody else um, um, sort of found the same thing, and they said, "Well, um, didn't you give them all this information?" I said, "No, I have I have I have no idea. I have no idea, you know." That the, the, the web was set up by somebody. I have no idea, you know, sort of who this who, who this person is. Um, uh, well, well, aren't you? I mean, uh, aren't you going to sort of do something about this? And I said, well, well, no. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm, you know, I'm really not. I mean, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm really not going to. I'm really not going to worry about, um, you know, sort of what I find about me on the internet. I mean, this is just not. Um, uh, this is just not a productive way to spend one's time. Um, so I, the whole issue, the whole issue of, um, I, I think the whole issue of diversity in mathematics is a very complicated one. And I think that, um, I think that a lot has been said and written about it that in 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 many ways is a is a is a is a giant red herring um, in order to avoid confronting much harder problems that um, nobody really wants to touch I mean society as a whole that you know doesn't you know doesn't really doesn't 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 really want to touch in a way um, I mean for me what's important um, you know, people people go on about you know people go on about sort of representation in mathematics and how how do we encourage more people, you know, from you know more women or more underrepresented minorities or more of anybody to go into mathematics. How do we how do we encourage people to go into mathematics? Now, for me, I mean, this is going to come as a shock, maybe to you know to many people. I, I'm not sure I would encourage anybody to go into mathematics. <laughs> And this isn't because I mean I'm I'm not I'm not don't misunderstand me I'm not saying that um, I'm not saying this because I I regret the choices I have made I mean far from it, but I think mathematics is something mathematics as a career at least as a, as a research career is something that you do almost in spite of yourself. I mean you have to you have to be really I think you have to be really driven to do this. And if you're not, if you don't have that, if you don't have that drive, um, you probably, you probably shouldn't do it because, you know, I, you know, you're, you're working, you know, you're working on problems, you know, most of the time you, 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 you're thinking about them all the time. You try all these different things. Most of the time, what you try doesn't work. Most of the time, you know, most of the time you're stuck. Um, it can be very frustrating. And if you're not really, if you're not really driven, if you don't have this internal drive, you're not, if you're not really driven by, 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 uh, by, uh, by, by, by real passion for the subject, as it were, I, I just don't think this is going to work. I mean, you should probably find something else that, um, you know, that you're good at and that you would, you know, that you would enjoy more. It's not like, it's not like encouraging, it's not like encouraging somebody to become a lawyer or a doctor. I think the, the rewards, the rewards of doing mathematics are far, are far, are far, are far less tangible than that. They're very real, but they are, they are, they are, they are, they're not as, you know, they're, they're not as tangible as, you know, some other, say, you know, say more lucrative things. So in, in terms of in, encouraging people to go into mathematics, I, I, I don't think that's the, I don't like that at all. Um, so what do I think, um, you know, what do I think is more important? 
I think what's important is that um, people be given the opportunity, the adequate opportunity to discover whether or not they have this passion or whether or not they have this drive. And that's what I that's what I think is that's what I think is paramount. I think people people should be given people should be given the opportunity to do mathematics, proper mathematics. People should be I think people should be exposed to proper mathematics, um, you know, in the education system, and and given the opportunity to discover for themselves whether or not this is what they want to do. And if this is what they really want to do, then of course they should be encouraged as much as possible. Um, the problem is that um, the way things are set up now, um, this 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 just doesn't happen. I mean, there isn't there isn't equality of opportunity in terms of in terms of uh, in terms of access to you know sort of mathematical education or indeed you know sort of education at all. And so many people, I think, um, many people are badly taught. They're poorly taught. They go through you know they go through the school system and they go through they go through life not really not really knowing what's out there they don't know they don't know what the opportunities are and so i think that's what one has to focus on now the problem is that in order to focus on that that's a huge political that's a huge political problem because you know what would you in order in order to do that what would have to happen well you'd have to fund schools properly you'd have to you'd have to ensure um, you know adequate access to childcare you'd have to ensure adequate access to healthcare you would have to you would have to you know sort of completely you know sort of completely completely redo the system in ways that are that are completely you know unimaginable to most people it, it's certainly a herculean it's certainly a herculean task and of course it, this is it's a hard it's a hard problem and so instead of instead of you know i think in, instead of confronting these problems, or at least acknowledging that this really is the problem, um, you know, people are engaged in um, trying to, well, trying to do things like encourage people to go into mathematics or to, you know, sort of focus on uh, focus on representation on, of various sorts, right at the very, you know, right at the very end of the. Uh, you know, right at the very end of the pipeline, so to speak, to use the to use the lingo, and I'm not sure. I, I think I think that's I think that's a. I mean, of course, that that's going to have some that's going to have some benefit. Some people will discover. Some people will discover. Um, you know, for themselves that they that, that they do have this drive, this passion for mathematics, and and they'll be led to do it that way. But I don't think this is. Uh, I don't think it's really getting at the heart of the problem. Uh, so you mentioned this drive, and that's what people tend to say that you should do math if you have the real drive for it, the real passion. Now, the problem on the side of young mathematicians is that we don't know what exactly is the real drive and the real passion, because, you know, I guess all of us have some days when math is, you know, it's somehow exciting and you feel inspired and then you think wow my job is the best in the world and then there are other days when you know math doesn't work and you think that you don't have interest and you don't have drive and like nothing nothing works so how is there any at least for you your criterion on how to measure this you know drive thing which is very uh, non-concrete well um Yes, I mean, on, so sure, I mean, sometimes things don't go well. I mean, in fact, most of the time, you know, most of the time, you know, most of the most of the time, um, you're stuck. But I think, I think underneath, I mean, there has to be a real joy, you have to take joy in doing mathematics itself, right? I mean, for me, the the most important thing is the mathematics itself. You have to you have to take joy and you have to take pleasure in doing that. <clears throat> and I think it's very important. It's very important to to safeguard that that aspect of yourself, and um, make sure that you don't uh, make sure that you don't you don't lose that. Um, now, yes, okay. Um, Fortunately, I mean the way the way life is structured. I mean, if you you have to do most people, at any rate, have to do lots of different things. And so, if mathematics isn't going so well, you could um, 
you know, you 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 could. I mean, you're working on pro on a problem, or you're working on something, and you're stuck, and it, 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 you know it's not working. You can you can go and do something else. You can you can go to the cinema, or you can you can you, you can take your mind off, or or or, or go to the opera, or, or or you can you can do things to take your mind. I mean, you 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 can't do mathematics 24 hours a day, or at least I can't. And so you have to you you have to try and achieve some sort of balance in your life. And there are no there are no rules about there are no rules about there are no rules about that. I mean, it's it's very hard to. It's it's very hard to be prescriptive to be prescriptive about this. In fact, one of the things that you learn, I mean, I think that many young people don't realize, and I think it would be helpful to. This is a this is a bit of a double-edged thing. You sort of don't realize is that the the only when it comes to you know when it comes to sort of doing mathematics. Really, the only rule is that there are no rules. I mean, you can't, everyone, you have to find your own way. I mean, that's, everyone, you, you just, you just, you just have to do this. And how you go about doing that will vary enormously from person to person. And, um, and that's sort of bound up with all sorts of other things, like how you approach your life and all sorts of other things. And, you know, there are a zillion and one different lives in this world. And I, so, um, but in terms of in terms of coping in terms of coping with frustration, well, yes, sometimes things don't work, and you uh, you know you you just have to you have to keep thinking about it. And you have to be patient, and you 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 know you 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 get on with it. And sometimes you just have to give up. Um, of course, the tricky thing is knowing when to give up. That's that's a hard that can be a hard decision to make, but um, I you know I I I've 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 heard people tell me that well if they think about something for a week and they get nowhere they give up. To me, I I find that unbelievable. That to me is incredible. It takes me a week just to understand a problem. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, if I gave up if I gave up after a week, I I would never do anything. I mean, it would just you know game over, I might as well, you know, pack up and go and, I, I don't know, become a woodcutter. Um, it's, it's just, I, you know, yeah, so, um, so I have, a, I have a feeling that once again, I'm not really answering your question. Um, I love your answers so far. Well, it, it, it seems, it strikes me as being a bit of a, a, a bit of a non-answer. I mean, so one thing I do do, I mean, well, well, there are things there, you know, I, I guess I do do other things. I guess I do do other things apart from mathematics and that, and that helps. You know, I see a lot of films. I, you know, I, I, I tend to go mad during film festivals and I, and I, um, yeah, and I, yeah, I, you know, I go to exhibition, art exhibitions and things like that. Um, and if I'm, if I'm, if I'm really stuck or really feeling depressed, I'll go and see a film. I'll go to a cinema and you know, sit in the cinema and go and, and go and see a film, and then usually, usually that will usually that will help. Although sometimes that backfires spectacularly. I remember on one occasion, uh, this was um, I was in um, I was in Champaign Urbana in Illinois, and uh, the math across the street from the mathematics department, there was a cinema. This was many years ago. The cinema's probably gone. I don't know. I have no idea. I haven't, I haven't been to I haven't been to Havana in twenty years. And I remember sitting in the library. I was just feeling. I was just feeling really I, I depressed. I thought I need. I need. I need. I need a film to cheer me up. I said. I thought to myself. I need a film to cheer me up. Anything. I need. I need anything to cheer me up. So I walked across the street to the cinema, and I paid my money and sat down and to to, to watch the film. And the film. <laughs> I still can't believe this happened to me. The film, the film was called Sid and Nancy. And it was, a, it was about Sid Vicious of the Sex Pistols and his girlfriend, Nancy, I can't remember her last name, but these were basically, you know, two rather pathetic specimens of humanity who were hell bent on, you know, sort of reaching the bottom as fast as possible, as far as I could tell. 
And this was about the last thing I needed. <laughs> this was about the last thing I needed at that time. So that was that was one time it didn't it didn't work. I I, I came out of the movie theater feeling a lot more depressed than I had when I went in. <laughs> but usually, but usually, um, yeah, you should watch that film and then you'll see what I you'll see what I you'll see what I mean. It's really, really, really incredible. I didn't know anything about Sid Vicious at all, but um, the the whole thing was just the whole thing the whole thing was just horrible. Um, but, um, yeah, and so, so yes, I think you just have to accept that this is going to happen. I, I, you just have to, this is, this, you just have to accept that this is going to happen and that this is, and you have to know on some level, that this isn't, this, this probably isn't going to last forever. So. And, and once this has happened to you a few times, I think that lends that lends a greater perspective, that lends a greater perspective to uh, to, to, to your present day experiences, because you know you've been through this before, and that you'll probably you got through it before, so you'll probably get through it again. It's probably one of those things. It's it, it, it's probably like having to confront a problem. I've never made I've never thought about this before. Actually, it's probably like having to confront a problem and. Uh, you know, that you've never seen before and just solve it. I'm not saying an, an unknown problem or anything like that. I mean, in, in some ways, as you say, as I think about this, this is not so different from many, exper many other experiences in life that are completely unconnected with mathematics, right? There are, you know, people have bad experiences in life, right? I mean, you know, there are, there are bad times. You go through, you, you know, you go through, you go through bad times and of course, these things are not very pleasant, and you wish that they didn't happen. But at the same time, I think as you as you as you grow older and you have a bit more experience, you realize that um, okay, um, this is horrible, but the world is not going to come to an end. You know, I have this is I have been through this before, and you know, things you know things worked out, and the sky didn't fall in, and um, okay, you know, this is just this is just this is just a part of life. It's just, uh, that's just the way, that's just the way it works. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, I agree. It's just that this um, unmeasurable drive to mathematics is a, um, is a quite weird reason, I think, to be doing something in a sense that I have an impression that for many other people they have more clear criteria for why they're doing their job, like they have to earn money, or they're saving the world for in some way or another, or you know, one of other uh, more understandable reasons than the drive, because the moment when you lose your drive while you're doing a job for another reason, then it's not so crucial. But like in the periods when you don't feel too interested in mathematics, uh, perhaps it's more crucial to you overthinking your choice of profession. Well, um, I think I, th I think with many other professions, I think you're right. But if you do have a passion for something, if you do, if you do feel that there is something that you that you really that you're driven to do, that you really have to do in spite of yourself, almost almost in spite of yourself. Well, sometimes you can't, and you know that's that's sad, but it does happen. I mean, you know then then i think you you have to you have to do that i i think you really i think you really have to do that you really have to try and if if it doesn't work out it might not work out it then it doesn't work out um but um but at least you tried um right and if you're going to, but if you're the sort of person, if you if you think if you start if you start if you start rethink if if, if uh, you know you start experiencing difficulty, and you know okay you 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 hit a roadblock and you can't do something, and then you start rethinking your choice of profession, et cetera, et cetera. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess you can do that. I mean, I mean, sometimes it's justified and sometimes it's not. It's it it just depends on the, you know, it just depends on the it just depends on the it just depends on the individual. Um, 
it's very hard to give general advice on 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 this. Um, I remember when I was in graduate school, there was um, there was a colleague of mine. <laughs> sort of a ridiculous story and it doesn't really I don't know why I thought of this I don't know why I thought of this now maybe maybe it's in terms of giving up um there was a there was a colleague of mine who started he started working he started working with a particular with a particular advisor who gave him who gave him a problem and he couldn't do it and he became I think a bit frustrated so he gave up on this advisor switched to a different advisor, was given a new problem. And then he, from this problem from his new advisor, he, he solved. But then in the meantime, he also solved the problem from his old advisor. <laughs> so, but of course he had to write up this new problem. And in the meantime, this other advisor number one kept banging on his door. Look, you need to write this up. Don't you want a thesis? I mean, come on, look, I mean, you've done this, you know, you know please do it. So, um, okay, there was a happy ending and, and I, I haven't seen this person in many years, but they, you know, they now have a, you know, perfectly reasonable career. Um, so you never know what's going to happen when you give something up. I mean, life is just full of all sorts of twists and turns. Um, and um, but I will say it's I think it's the I think it's the joy of doing mathematics itself that sustains you during these down periods. And you just have to realize that this is part of the process. Uh, so speaking of mathematics that you did do before the pandemic, I'm curious uh, about um, as far as I understand, one of the parts of your research is around the birds with Norton Dyer conjecture. And so I'm curious, is there a special you know, feeling about touching a millennium problem in, in certain ways? Or for you, it's just the same? No, not really. No, not at all. <laughs> no, because no, no, because no, because I became interested in this circle of this circle of ideas around 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 elliptic curves and those problems, you know, long before they became millennium problems. So yeah, it's nice that okay, it's nice that this has led to a millennium problem, but I don't care. Oh, I mean, <laughs> I just, you know, just it makes it makes not not one whit of difference to me. Wow. Well. Um, well I mean, no, I mean, because at least for me, I mean, how do you, well, how do you go about doing mathematics, right? How do you decide, how do you decide, you know, sort of what to work on? I mean, again, I think this is a very, again, I think this is a very individual thing, but for me, I mean, it, it works as follows, right? I mean, there's, there, there are people who, who decide that there's a huge program that they wish to implement, or there's a big problem that they wish to solve. And they, you know, they 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 work that way. And you know, there's nothing. I'm not. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. That's just that's a particular that's a particular style of working. And and for me, it doesn't work that way at all. For me, I just have I have, um, you know, there 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 are I, I, I there, there are things I just want to understand, right? I mean, there are things I want to understand. So I ask myself questions. And sometimes these things I want to understand. I mean, they're they're, they're certainly understood by other people, but not by me. But I, you know, so I want to understand. I want to understand. Uh, I want to understand something. So I ask myself questions and I read things and I try things and I talk to people and I play around. And then, so, you know, sometimes one thing leads to another and you come up with something new. But for me, it's, for me, the way I work is, I mean, it's, it's really driven by questions I want to understand. Things I, I just have questions and they're things, they're things I want to understand. And so, um, you know, whether or not, uh, whether or not, uh, the millennium problem or not is really not the uh, you know is really is 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 really not is 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 really not the issue. Now, when I say it's really not the issue, I mean I suppose the thing about the millennium problems is that I mean if you look at these problems, you, these are obviously interesting questions. It seems to me. I mean these are these are questions that are that are clearly that are clearly interesting. So, um, um, so yeah. Um, so yeah, and then, you know, sometimes you, you, you can start out with a very small question and it can lead to, you, you can be surprised at where things take you. 
Speaking of that, I have a question to you, which is not something I've prepared. It just occurred to me that maybe I can get like lifetime <laughs> question, which is um, pretty relevant for me in the upcoming future. So if your uh, strategy is, you know, just trying to answer the questions you have one by one, you know, or like as soon as they occur, uh, with no, you know, big program for many years. How do you raise? That's not quite what I said, but go on. <laughs> That's what I heard. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Go. But but go on. Yes. How do you write a research statement where you are supposed to describe a several-year program, an application for I don't know, grant, or fellowship, or whatever? Oh. Oh well, I have lots of questions in my head. Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I have lots of uh, <laughs> oh no but yeah, well yeah that's not that well I have lots of questions so I mean I, I'm you know I'm constantly asking myself questions so I mean so that's not um and I know that if I could answer this question then you know maybe that would lead to that question and, and you know that sort of thing you know which questions you want to work on at any given point in time I think and you know why you're interested in these questions and why you why you want to answer them and usually the answers will involve will involve other questions and so you just explain this and it's very hard to it's it can be quite hard to plan research years in advance because well if you if you if you have a if you have a you know a complete plan with everything mapped out then it's not really research in a way i mean if you know how everything you don't know how everything is going to go you 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 just you just don't and so you you know you 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 make a, a best effort and then you let the chips fall where they may. I mean, I think in many cases what happens is you know people write these things and then they ignore them, which is fine. In fact, that's how it should be. Okay, maybe that's sacrilege in a way, but I but I do think. Whoops, sorry, I, I do think that happens. Um, I, I I do think that happens more often than not. So. Um, so just think about the things that you, I mean, think about the things you'd like to do. Just think about problems you'd like to work on. That's it. Yeah, it's just that, you know, time-wise, myself, I imagine what I want to work on in the following months. I have no idea about, like, in two years. This sounds scary to me. <laughs> but you probably have more than one month's worth of questions in your head. Okay, so write up two years worth of questions <laughs> as it were uh, yeah again yeah and you know you you've done things and questions are questions come up from that and you have other ideas and you can sort of spin this together into into some sort of coherent into some sort of coherent narrative uh-huh you don't sound convinced at all <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> Let me ask you the next question. It sounds like okay. no troubles writing five-year grant proposal. <laughs> no, I no 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 that I didn't. That's not true. That's not true at all. But uh, <laughs> but I that's 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 just you know that's just what I that's just what I would that's just what I would do. I see. So, BC, what's in your opinion the biggest misconception about math research or mathematicians? The biggest misconception on the part of whom? Uh, people outside mathematics. People outside mathematics. Um, I think the biggest misconception that I have encountered is that it can't possibly exist. Um, so um, I, I think uh, that that's I, a lot of people, you know, when you meet them, you tell them that you're a mathematician and that you, you do research and they say, well, how is that possible? Wasn't it all discovered 2000 years ago? I've had that re reaction more times than I can count. So that's the biggest misconception. The biggest misconception is that they don't they don't understand. They don't understand um, that mathematics research is even possible or why, um, you know, or how it can possibly happen. That's partly why you need the 20 minute cocktail party speech 
you know, the cocktail party, well, speech is really the wrong word, but cocktail party sort of introduction that I mentioned um, at the beginning of this interview. That's the biggest misconception. And of course, there's the other, the other misconception is that, well, you know, you know, mathematicians are all, you know, are all a bit crazy. And, you know, they think that they're all, they're all weird and uh, there's something, you know, perhaps slightly wrong with them. Perhaps there's more truth to that misconception. Um, mathematicians, I, I think, I think you'll find as, as a whole, I think mathematicians, mathematicians have a very high tolerance for eccentricity. And, and they tend to be social disasters. And, you know, mathematicians can really be social, can really be social disasters. I mean, it's, it's, it's quite, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's quite something. Um, <clears throat> so um, I think people do, people do extrapolate from that, which is a bit, you know, which is a bit, uh, you know, which is a bit, which is a bit unfair. Um, but I think those are, those are, those are the two, those are the two real misconceptions. A, you know, what does mathematics research doesn't exist and B, mathematicians are all crazy. And you can see the, you, you can see this, in, you know, with the way mathematicians are portrayed in, 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 uh, you know, in fiction and on film and that sort of thing. You know, why do you the, think you, that's the case? Why do I think that's the case? I think there are a lot of eccentric mathematicians out there. Um, no, that's a flippant answer and isn't doesn't quite cat, doesn't quite do justice to the situation. I think. Um, I think because I suspect because on some level, people find mathematics very remote. It's something that people are afraid of. And it's, it's, it's very, it's intensely cerebral. And there is this tendency, I think, in popular culture to associate the cerebral with madness. A lot of professions that involve, well, maybe not a lot, but with many professions that involve, um, you know, a lot of deep isolated thought. When you see these, these people portrayed in popular culture, they're portrayed as being a bit weird, you know, not in touch with the world. That's, that's the charitable end of the spectrum and completely mad you know, when it, uh, you know, in other, in other respects. So you don't see this just with mathematicians, but you'd see this say with, oh, I don't know, with, with um, uh, sort of chess players or, um, or, 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 well, to, to, or, or pretty much anything, anything of that, anything of that, um, anything of that sort. And the other thing I think is that for some reason, I mean, I think because people are afraid of, in, in at least in, in popular culture, people are afraid of mathematics, and so people associate quite and people associate mathematics with genius. And so, well, oh, if you do mathematics, then you must be a genius. But geniuses are mad, <laughs> right? Um, there's this whole, you know, there's this whole sort of juxtaposition of of, of madness and genius that you encounter, you know, in, in art constantly. And because people associate mathematics with with genius, because it's something that they just sort of can't relate to at all, and ergo madness follows. And so you see things like Pi, for example, or uh, or uh, Pi the film. I mean, I mean, you know, or Pi the film, or or Proof, or um, sort of various other things like that. So this makes sense to me. But what I don't understand is why do you say that? Mathematicians are often a social disaster, given that you mentioned that when you don't understand mathematics, you go and ask questions and you know discuss it with people. So the job of a mathematician usually requires, I think, a lot of communication, which supposedly is related to social skills. So how does that happen? I think that um, mathematicians are more tolerant of a lack of social skills than uh, most other classes of people. And I should say, by the way, I think that's great. I think that's absolutely, I think that's absolutely great. I think that it's, um, I think that it's, um, you know, I, I think that it's, you know, it, I, you know, as a, as, 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 as a friend of mine, as a friend of mine, what's, what, what, you know, what's put it and, you know, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to mention his name, but, you know, he was always, he was, he was always considered a, a bit, 
you know, a, a bit, a bit, a bit weird. But as he once said to me, you know, BC, I thought about it and I've realized that in every department I've ever been in, it was always somebody who was definitely weirder than I am. And he's absolutely right. <laughs> Let me ask you the last question. So uh, in the previous interview, I asked uh, Hélène what does she wish to young mathematicians? And this time I want to uh, gain some benefit from having known you for many years. So let me ask you, what do you wish me as a young mathematician? What do I wish for you? Oh, goodness. Um... I hope you're successful. <laughs> so far, so good. Um, but um, but more more deeply, I hope. I mean, you know what I would. I think what I would wish for any young mathematician, and 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 especially for you. Well, not especially for you, but in particular for you, I should say, is that I think what's essential to learn as a young mathematician is that you have to find your own way. You have to find your own way of looking at the world and of, you know, formulating your own questions and of thinking about things. Um, you have to develop your own style. You have to, you 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 just have to, you you just have to find your own way of doing things, while at the same time, you know, retaining the joy that you have in doing mathematics. I think that is crucial. And that is what I hope you do successfully. <laughs>